Very good morning to you. Thank you so much for your time and joining us on Channel 405. Some really uh, concerning matters as we have watched over the, the state of schools in the Eastern Cape being under the spotlight. Some shocking revelations revealed cramped classrooms, um, you know, broken roofs, and as well as um, schools unable to open because of a lack of safe and appropriate sanitation. The list is really endless, but I understand that you have been making some sort of strides in ensuring that the education system in the Eastern Cape is improved. Uh, thank you very much, um, Paul. Uh, morning to, to, to you and the viewers at home. Um, it, maybe, Paul, I must, um, I must uh, uh, concur with you. The narration that you have given, uh, it's, it's honest and it's balanced. And I can further confirm to you that um, uh, almost like 33 schools are going to be handed over to different communities in the province. Uh, in the past week, the, um, the MEC has already given three schools uh, in different communities. And on the 26th, there's also another school that is uh, a science lab that is going to be uh, given to a community in Kunu. And also on the 30th, there's also another school that is going to be given on the side of Oartam. And maybe I must agree with you that um, one of the most critical things uh, that the Department of Education is faced with in the province is that you've got many schools that uh, at this point in time, in terms of democracy, they should not be existing. But more also, you've got a project uh, called a uh, school rationalization that is being done by the department, wherein the department is saying that let's merge those small, unviable and dysfunctional schools and make uh, uh, them uh, bigger uh, uh, schools and, and, and functional. But continuously, what we get to have as a problem is that there are, there are communities wherein they revolt to close and unfunctional uh, 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 and inappropriate schools uh, on the basis of sentiments, on the basis that the school will be caring, and also on the basis uh, that there would have been the community that contributed in the building of that particular school. So I agree I, again with you that um, uh, in this financial year, there is going to be a plethora of schools that is going to be given to our own communities in trying to give respect to them because when you talk of uh, a school's infrastructure, you talk of, 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 uh, of human rights, you talk of what needs to be given and delivered to the people of the province, and also you talk of a secured a, a future for the learners that we have in the province. But again, all, all of that is largely dependent to the available budget that the department has. And maybe I can give you a confirmation that in the past five years, We've been getting a top slicing uh, because anything that we do as a department is largely dependent on whether the economy of the country generally is going up. And if it then goes down, and when you listen to the to the to the minister of finance, he tells you that, that they've done a cutting on the basic education, they've done a cutting on the on the on the higher education. It therefore tells you that some of the things that we've put as a priority, they are going to be changed. And even in this financial year we are going to face that, uh, that reality. But at least we've got schools that we're going to give in different communities in the province. Now, Vuisek, uh, another really pressing matter here, we learned with shock and horror of a school principal who coerced a, an 11-year-old pupil to retrieve a cell phone from a, a pit latrine. What are the latest developments around that matter and what is your, your reaction? Uh, firstly, I, I think in for all of us, we just generally as a country, we needed to frown with that incident that uh, an old person that is a principal uh, entrusted with the responsibility to be a father figure in everyone that is a kid in that particular school that is entrusted with the responsibility to be a leader in all the, the teachers in that school uh, could be accused of having done such an incident. Uh, but I can tell you that on Monday um, uh, this week, the principal um, that is, uh, is an accused in our own terms has been uh, suspended and an acting principal has been uh, appointed. And secondly, I can uh, also confirm to you that he was once arrested um, and he, he then uh, got released on bail. And I can further uh, indicate to you that on the 8th of April is the day that which he will be appearing before the DC of the department. And on the 15th, uh, I mean on the 14th um, of April, he will be expected to appear in a court of law. And I can confirm uh, lastly before that on the 24th uh, of this month, the MEC will join the, 
the, the, in fact, the MEC will be meeting with the stakeholders in that uh, school, the SGP, the SMT, uh, the community, the traditional leaders in that area. And thereafter, after we have met with those stakeholders inside the school, we then proceed to the family uh, to, to, to meet with them. Because amongst the disturbing uh, 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 revelations that we are getting is that uh, this learner is staying with an old woman of uh, 75. Now, anyone else would think what could be the, the, the imaginations of that, uh, of that lady and what could be the reaction uh, when he heard that he, his, his, his grandparent uh, was then coerced to, to, to do such an incident. So the MEC will be going there to make sure that uh, the, co the, the family feels uh, supported by the department, and I can confirm that there is psychosocial support that has been given to the learner. Okay, and just also for the sake of time, if you'll allow me to, to interrupt you there, but uh, this also speaks to the delays that your department is really um, falling behind here. Surely we shouldn't have a situation where we still have pit latrines in our schools. But in terms of categories on, 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 on infrastructure, those... Uh, um, uh, toilets in that schools they are categorized as a uh, VIP toilets and in terms of the standard of norms and standards at least they are acceptable uh, uh, legally so and I can say that in terms of at least the school that is in question uh, is in good shape is a school that was built in 2012 and that's why the principal had to come with a hammer and the and the and, and also spades uh, to, to dig a different hole from the actual infrastructure that is there. So from where we're seated, whilst we do agree and accept that we've got infrastructural problems, but when it comes to this school, it's a different case. It's an irresponsible act that has been done by an individual. And as we deal with it, we deal it with an understanding that we're not taking away the, the, the reality of different schools in the province that they should not be existing, but them not to exist it will only be a, a, a dependent with the available budget and also what uh, other form of funding can the department be able to get. Very well. We're going to have to leave it there. Thank you so much uh, for your time.